Okay, so you're starting to fight a little bit more than usual in your relationship, or maybe there's just that distance, that gap between you both. Basically, you're starting to think that the cracks are starting to show. I'm gonna give you six indications that your relationship is in trouble. my YouTube channel. I'm Renee Slasky. I'm a professional dating and relationship coach and I'm here to help you create the love life that you desire and deserve. I'm incredibly passionate about changing the dating culture and making sure that we are actually having fulfilling and healthy relationships. Now this week I want to talk in particular to the couples. I want to really make sure that you are moving forward and that you're not getting stuck in that kind of gray area which usually happens after the honeymoon period. Maybe Maybe you feel, especially if you're watching this video, that things aren't going as smoothly in your relationship as what they used to. Relationships are hard work and we often think that just because we see other people have great marriages that they just automatically found someone amazing and it just kind of happened that way. Even as a dating and relationship coach, I can honestly say that if you want to have an incredible relationship, if you want to have an incredible marriage, you need to work on it every single day. And that is something that you have to choose to do. That is something that you have to commit to do as well if you want to see the progress. Some of the ways that we can actually prevent some of those battles in our relationships or some of those outside threats to our relationship is purely by being aware of what it is that we could be up against or what it is that we're doing or what the signs are when some of the cracks are starting to show. So I want to give you six indications that are pretty much saying that your relationship is in trouble. The first one is this, there usually is a lot of conflicts. Now conflict in a relationship is healthy and it's normal. In fact, when I meet couples who say that they broke up and they're like, I don't understand, we never fought. I think, well, no wonder you broke up. You need to have that conflict simply because it is a way to really work out what it is that you both want. It's a part of communicating and it also is a means to actually grow together and work through challenges together. Now there is a difference between having a little bit of healthy conflict and obviously lots of conflict where you're basically yelling at each other, biting each other's heads off and everything kind of presses your button and you just really explode. And it's like this constant sort of resentment that actually builds up to a point where neither of you can say anything or do anything without the person instantly reacting. If we have lots of conflict in a relationship, it's usually an indication of another underlying issue, whether it is that you do have resentment, whether it is that you have bitterness, whether it is that you are doing something because you feel guilty so you're constantly constantly on the defensive, conflict just doesn't come out of nowhere. And a lot of the time people come to me and when their relationship is going through a bad time, they're just like, but I don't understand, everything was so perfect. Well, things don't just automatically fall apart. There are things that we are doing. There are things that our partner are doing. There are things that we are allowing either consciously or subconsciously to get us to this point. And if you're having constant conflict in your relationship, it's because you're having a communication breakdown of what it is that you're feeling, what it is that you're needing, and what it is that your expectations are of the other person. Indication number two is this. There is indifference. The only thing worse than having too much conflict is indifference. Now you might have heard the saying that the opposite to love is not hate but indifference. Indifference basically means that you just don't care anymore. Where you're just completely neutral about everything. He can do what he wants. She can do what, it, what she wants. That is really dangerous territory. The moment that you don't care anymore if you have this attitude of you just don't care is the moment which is a real sign that you have fallen out of love with that person. When someone reacts at least you know that they still care about what it is that you're doing or what it is that you're saying. There's something worth fighting for. When couples actually get to a point where they're completely indifferent and they just don't care anymore, that is a lot harder to come back from because essentially what they need to do is they need to fall back in love with their spouse or they need to fall back in love with their partner so that they can have that level of, okay, I do care and this is what I'm actually going to do about it. Again, indifference doesn't come from nowhere. Indifference usually happens over a period of time because we get so annoyed or just so over the whole situation. So instead of allowing it to get to that point where it does turn into indifference, make sure that you're talking about what it is that you feel, what it is that you're thinking, what it is that you're angry about 
really try and reach out to them. And if you're finding that you're falling out of love with the person that you're with, then that's not to say that you can't fall back in love with them. It's really about choosing your focus and choosing about what it is that you want to feed. But more than anything, it's about choosing being committed to the relationship instead of allowing your feelings to govern your actions. The third indication is intimacy is either non-existent or it is really inconsistent. Now, intimacy obviously is incredibly important in a relationship. And I'm not just saying that because you need to have a super high sex drive and men need sex and this and that and women need to be satisfied. It is important because what it does is it actually creates a bond between a couple. Every time that you are physically intimate with your husband or your wife, you are essentially creating this connection with them and you're strengthening that connection. Now, what we do is we basically put intimacy on the back burner. We think, well, that's not important because I don't feel like having sex or I don't feel like being intimate because I hate them or I don't like them or they've done this, this and this. And we basically allow all those sort of things to get in the way of actually doing something that is going to create the bond and actually make the bond even stronger. For us as women, we usually have to feel emotionally drawn to a man before we can feel physically drawn to him. Whereas for men, they need to know that they feel physically fulfilled to a, by a woman before they can feel emotionally open and vulnerable to a woman. So you can see how we get this battle of the sexes here. All I can say is this, you cannot allow intimacy to be something that just gets left on the wayside or something that you only do when you have time or only when you feel like it. Intimacy is an important part of a relationship. Being physically intimate with them is what's actually going to create more of an emotional connection as well, meaning that you're actually going to potentially fall more in love with them and be able to work through things and let your guard down so you can talk to each other once again. Try to be intimate with each other even if you don't feel like it and just watch everything start to shift just a little bit at a time. I promise you there is power in actually bringing that connection together. And if you're starting to doubt it, well, remember those times where you're trying to move on from somebody and you couldn't because you kept sleeping with them and you basically felt drawn to them? Well, why don't you apply that to the relationship that you're actually in? Win over that person again, seduce them again, make time to actually prioritize the intimate part of your physical relationship. The fourth indication is this, you don't miss them or you you're not excited to see them. Obviously, over time, as we start to get into a routine with someone, or we've been with somebody for years and months, or maybe even decades, we can become used to them, we can become overly familiar, and we can become complacent as well. That's why it's important to always keep dating each other. That's why it's important to keep chasing each other and keep wooing each other and keep trying to win each other over. And not only that, still have your own sort of lives outside of each other so you can create that opportunity to miss each other. A fifth indication if your relationship is really in trouble is this. You don't want to share wins with them. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you are really excited about something and then you can't wait to tell your partner, you can't wait to go home and actually say, hey, I got this massive promotion or hey, I lost five kilos or whatever it is. Basically, you no longer want to share this sort of information with them. You don't want to share the big things with them and you don't want to share the intimate little exciting things or achievements with them as well. Relationships are fantastic when we feel that we've got someone who we can have this incredible unity with and share life with. It's basically like marrying your best friend as such. Now, when you feel that you don't have that friendship, let alone that partner relationship with the person that you're with, it really is a massive sign that you need to do something if you want your relationship to survive. Of course, once again, we usually base our actions when we get to this point on how we feel. And that's the reason why a lot of relationships go one way or, that, one way or the other. Either both people decide that they really need to put in the effort and they need to do something to keep the relationship going, or one person quits or they both want to quit because they're just not feeling it. As I said, relationships are hard work and we live in a very lazy society. We live in a disposable society where everyone just wants to replace things with everyone else because we can. We can jump on a dating app straight away because relationships have a pattern. Every relationship has a pattern. In fact, there's six stages that a relationship actually goes through. And just because you're going through this stage with your partner and maybe struggling, 
It's not to say that if you give up, you won't go through it again with somebody else. So that's why I encourage you to really identify all these signs first and then actually do something about it and at least try to actually overcome them. Try to work on them so you can give yourselves a fighting chance as a couple to fall back in love with each other, to get excited about telling them about the little things once again, share those wins and be on the same page again. And the last indication if your relationship is in trouble is that communication is poor and basically it's almost like there's this big void between you where you only have surface talk or there's this pink elephant in the room and you both don't want to talk about it because neither of you want to really deal with what the issues could be or you're too scared of the consequences of what's going to happen of talking about it whether it is that you have to actually do work together or go to therapy or you're actually scared that you don't want to do this anymore and you just don't want to voice that communication is the glue to any relationship and it is the starting point of trying to turn everything around. You can't just expect magically for your partner to know things and you can't expect them to magically change overnight or for you yourself to change overnight. Communication helps you work together as a team and speaking about what it is that you're feeling or thinking, even if you feel guilty about it or even if you're unsure, at least you're putting it all out there on the table and you're making it transparent. But if you want to really move forward, if you want to heal, and if you want to actually make your relationship become strong again, become loving, become joyful and fulfilling again, then you have to talk about what it is that you're going through. You have to talk about the pink elephant in the room. I believe that you can rebuild your relationship to how it used to be and that sometimes when we go through battles, they can actually make us incredibly stronger as a couple. Well, there you go. I really hope that those tips helped you identify what some of the issues are and also also gave you a little bit of clarity and direction on what it is that you need to do right now. If you have any questions, email me at hello at renesleinsky.com. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do new videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's it from me and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.